Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start the commencement ceremony for the class of 2020 at the International School Nido de Aguilas. This is a historic event, the first ever virtual graduation ceremony for Nido. We are streaming this commencement live on Zoom from Santiago, Chile. We have a team of specialists working behind the scenes to bring you this important moment. That being said, please excuse any technical difficulties that we may encounter along the way. If we have problems with internet connectivity, we will keep moving. Employ your school value of adaptability and circle back when ready. And now, please sit back and enjoy the celebration. Seniors, welcome to the theater on your graduation night. I'm here mostly by myself with a, so a small team spread out around the theater helping to run the show. There's a bit of an echo and I'm wishing that you, your family, our faculty and special guests were here with me. And while it might feel strange not to be seated on the stage, I think it is important to remember that this past year has taught us something, something important about our community. We already know that we don't need a building to prove how much we care for one another. We are part of NEDO, and this community is a strong one. So let's let this night be about that community. Let's take part in an incredible celebration. Let's laugh, let's share in these moments with our family and friends, and let's create some neato memories, new and old. I'm immensely honored to be a part of your story. And so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the moment you have all been waiting for our seniors, the class of 2020.
Muy buenas tardes, señoras y señores. Bienvenidos a la ceremonia de graduación de la clase 2020 del Colegio Internacional Nido de Águilas. Mi nombre es Rodolfo Franco, esta es mi graduación número 69 y la primera online, dadas las circunstancias por las cuales atraviesa el mundo. 123 estudiantes provenientes de 31 distintos países y quienes hablan 18 diversos idiomas son los que en el día de hoy dicen adiós a Nido. Algunos estaban inscritos en el colegio antes de nacer, otros dieron su examen de admisión a los dos años y medio. 48 de ellos han estado 15 largos años en el colegio lo que es toda una vida. Dos pertenecen a una segunda generación. No puedo dejar de saludar a dos de mis exalumnos, Catalina Cohen y Tadao Mitani, cuyas hijas se despiden hoy de Nido. Out of the 123 students of this class, 67 will graduate from NIDO with both the International Baccalaureate Diploma and the NIDO International Diploma. 57 students will be awarded the Chilean National High School Diploma and the NIDO International Diploma. 22 students will be awarded all three school diplomas. Congratulations, seniors. La diversidad de la clase que hoy se gradúa se manifiesta en lo heterogéneo de su origen y esto lo comprueba la variedad de países representados. Argentina Australia Austria Bélgica Canadá China Colombia Croacia Denmark Ecuador France Alemania Hungary India Ireland, Italia, Japan, México, Netherlands, Nueva Zelanda, Norway, Panamá, Peru, Rusia, South Africa, Corea del Sur, Spain, Suecia, Switzerland, Taiwan, United Kingdom, Venezuela, United States of America, y por supuesto Chile, señoras y señores, Hoy dice adiós la clase del 2020.
It is my pleasure now to invite the President of the Board of Directors, Mr. Francisco Sanchez, to share some inspirational words for the Class of 2020 graduates. Good evening. Dear members of the Board of Directors, Headmaster Mr. David Perry, members of the administration, distinguished faculty, proud parents, graduating Class of 2020, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct pleasure to share this evening with you and address the audience on behalf of the Board of Directors when we celebrate one of our most important traditions at Nido, the graduation ceremony. From the humble origins of Nido, in its initial location of a few stone houses in the foothills of Peñalolén until today, the graduation ceremony has been held on several different stages. In Nido's home in La Reina, graduation ceremonies took place in a modest stage located in the school's dining room. The first graduation held in Loar was in 1960, 60 years ago when Dr. Waldo Stevenson, then headmaster of Nido, took the graduating class to hold this ceremony on occasion of laying the foundation stone of the new campus school in Loar Since then, Graduation ceremonies have been held in different venues on campus. The school's open grounds, the old library, a small auditorium located in front of the former elementary school building, the high school cafeteria, and our well-known gym, which hosted graduations since its inauguration in 1980 until 2013. When Nido commemorated its 80th anniversary, we came together to celebrate the graduation of the class of 2014 in the theater of the Fine Arts Center. I think that probably Dr. Stevenson could not have even fathomed that 60 years after the first graduation held on the Loa Nechea campus, his ideal and visionary location for Nido, our graduation ceremony would transition to a new venue, the cloud. But here we are hosting a virtual celebration, and we are here to celebrate and leave a positive and long-lasting memory for our seniors. I want to thank a big group of people who have been collaborating and working hard over the last few months and weeks to create an engaging and rewarding online experience for our graduating students, their families, and our educators. Our entire community is proud and thankful of the work you have done, especially in helping the school hold this ceremony to the relevance it has in Nido's traditions. I want to invite our seniors to join the board in expressing our gratitude and appreciation to people who are special for us, mostly now when our graduating students depart from Nido. We should be thankful of our faculty, your teachers, who have not only provided knowledge but also, and most importantly, counsel, mentoring, and wise orientation for life. We know how challenging this year has been for our teachers, and we want to thank them for holding fast, successfully transitioning to distance learning, while at the same time 
coping with the requirements of parenting and everyday life in a convoluted world. We should recognize our counselors, psychologists, learning coaches, and support professionals who have such a big part in the social-emotional well-being of our students, and in the particular case of our seniors, for the guidance they provide in the choices you are all making in regards to the next steps in your lives. We should be thankful for our staff, assistants, librarians, nurses, janitors, custodians, gardeners, and maintenance personnel who have supported you through life on campus, many times in roles that may seem invisible, but who play such an important part in our lives. This year, we will see the departure of people who are so significant to us. For example, Arturo Paz, who is retiring after devoting 53 years of his working life to Nido. We should appreciate the hard and devoted work of our academic and administrative leadership teams and our headmaster, who have dealt this year with unprecedented challenges while navigating these turbulent waters, keeping always the best interest of our students at the center of all their decision making. Seniors, as you come to a closure of this stage in your lives, we acknowledge these are times of celebration, ceremonies and excitement. A period in your lives to move on to something new, university, the pursuit of a career. We know and we are all proud of the incredible effort you have made through your school life and the hard things that you have been working towards. Please don't leave with the sense that these moments of celebration and the memories of your departure from Nido have been stolen away by the pandemic. On the contrary, while this year the payoff is different to what we have been used to, the reward is as valuable or even more so than in the traditional ways that have been cherished to us in the past. Watching how the world has changed in just a matter of weeks, getting a palpable experience of the fragility of life and the demand for physical distancing has required us to brush the dust off and strengthen our skills to manage threats, navigate different social and cultural contexts, improve communication, align individual and collective desires and aspirations, employ effective leadership and provide social and emotional support. We have been required to go back to finding value in relying on each other, collaborating so much more, seeing the importance of our families, of having tighter and more caring communities. The world we are about to enter is so different that all these skills are the ones that should, at the end of the day, make us more determined focused and motivated to live and help others live a better world. We will have to learn how to better align individual and collective interests, cooperate within groups and support each other, develop positive leadership and build trust. Probably as never before, we will be required to cope with stress, anxiety and economic difficulties but if we are able to foster social connection, create more intimate relationships, and live with healthy mindsets, we will all come out stronger from this testing time. My take for you on this is that Nido has given you the best preparation and skills anybody could aspire to for the world we are now living in. The ability to think creatively, brainstorm, develop, refine, and evaluate new ideas work creatively with others and innovate. Through the years, you have become critical thinkers by reasoning effectively, being able to analyze, evaluate arguments and alternative points of view, solve unfamiliar problems and make decisions. You can communicate clearly, listen to others, articulate thoughts and ideas, and utilize multiple media and technologies to share them with others. And as important as all of the above, you can collaborate with others, demonstrate an ability to work respectfully in teams, be flexible, cooperate and accomplish common goals, while doing it with empathy, tolerance, appreciation for diversity and kindness.
Therefore, you must be confident in yourselves and believe deeply in your capabilities and the strengths Nido has forged in you. Our whole school is with you today. We are here to say we trust in you and we know you can do it. You have the support and love of your families and you are going out to the world with the best toolkit anyone would want. We hope to see you return to Nido in the future, either as alumni, parents, faculty, or just to stop by and share your success with us. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to you, class of 2020, and Godspeed. Thank you, Francisco, for your inspirational words. Now I have the honor of introducing Ms. Caitlin Killian, whom the class of 2020 selected to serve as one of our two faculty speakers. Ms. Killian arrived to NIDO four and a half years ago. She is a literature and theory of knowledge teacher. She also serves as the CAS advisor for our IB program. Ms. Killian reports that of the 123 seniors, she has taught 73 seniors this year and 90 of the seniors throughout her career. We are thankful for all the ways that Ms. Killian has contributed to the growth and development of the class of 2020. We invite her now to offer her address to this special group of graduates. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm honored to speak before you on your special day. You've worked so hard to get here, and your optimism and perseverance inspire me. Whether it was in your encouraging hashtags at the senior sunset, your prolonged working silences during IB prep, your TED Talks, SAC trips, ego confessions, or a fundraiser for cancer on a cold winter night. You have always been persisting and motivating each other to be better. For the past three months, I've been missing you immensely. I spent a lot of time looking out my window where there are lots of things to distract me. The burning orange color of the leaves, the deserted sidewalks, the gray jagged outline of the Andes in the distance. There's also this man who has been playing tennis with a ghost in the park across the street from me. It's not a real ghost, don't worry. I haven't lost my mind in the quarantine. It's just this peculiar contraption that allows you to play tennis on your own. The ball is connected to a rubber string, which is held down by a weight on the ground allowing the ball to soar to the other side of an imaginary court and then swing back. I'm mesmerized by the eerie game and its unusual rhythm. In the space where I expect to hear the sound of a second hit, there's silence. People wearing masks wander by in the park, keeping a distance of six feet, careful not to interfere with the man's match against an invisible opponent. The whole scene is surreal absurd. I'm sure you've all seen similarly strange sights by now. My mind drifts to the settings of dystopian novels and I wonder, are we living in the midst of one of those fictional places? And if so, what does that mean? Italo Calvino wrote in The Cloven Viscount that the artist who accepts the world as it is will use realism. One who wants to explain it to himself or change it will use fable and fantasy. In some ways, it feels as if we've been plopped right into the false world of a fable, doesn't it? We're living in an, entire, in an entirely new place, one we never predicted or imagined just a few months ago. Life suddenly seems uncertain and isolating, but I think it's important to also recognize this as a new and valuable opportunity, one that previous generations were never given. Though some of you may have slept in and missed your early morning Zoom classes this semester, you have all officially been marked as present in the paradigm shift sparked by COVID-19. Some of your plans have crumbled, but in the space left behind, you've been offered the precious gift of time. Time to pause, time to think, time to imagine and look inward. Maybe this new context is your chance to take a risk and be bold to seek explanations, 
to make real change, as Calvino suggests. Because when ideas topple, they allow for new experiments to take place, new perspectives to grow. You, the class of 2020, are so well suited to thrive during this period of transition, rising to the challenges that lie ahead. You're at a pivotal moment in your lives. This is when you are asked to make big decisions, when your paths begin to veer, when you dip your toes into the shimmering lake of adulthood, trying on real independence and responsibility for the first time, maybe discovering that they feel like oversized winter coats, still a bit too baggy. This period was always going to be uncertain, thrilling and frightening for you. So I ask, who better than you to seize this opportunity? Who could be more perfect than you to take this moment to reflect and grow and lead? I don't blame you if you feel afraid, paralyzed even. What to do with time and uncertainty? Where to even start? Literature might offer some solace. You'll find wise voices there that can teach you about yourself, help you figure out who you wanna be. In the Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky writes, when I fall into the abyss, I go straight into it, head down, heels up, and I'm even pleased to be falling in such a humiliating position. I find it beautiful. And so in that very shame, I suddenly begin a hymn. It wasn't only Dostoevsky who found inspiration in free fall in that humbling feeling of uncertainty. Shakespeare wrote three plays in 1606, the year theaters were shut down due to the bubonic plague. Isaac Newton began working on the theory of gravity while in quarantine. And Edward Munch decided to paint himself while sick with the Spanish flu. Innovation and progress are often the products of creative people experimenting during times of turmoil and challenge, reacting to a world that's turned on its head. Now I'm not saying you have to be Shakespeare. All I'm saying is that I hope when you see blank spaces and free time and stretches of solitude, that rather than cower in fear, you rejoice. Recognize what a treasure it might be an opportunity to take a bold risk, a giant question to answer. It's hard to deny the surreal beauty of the tennis match outside my window. I look out and I see so much surprise, so much opportunity. I make out new customs, unfamiliar schedules, strangers learning how to smile through their eyes. They pause to admire the game and I wonder, what is it about this tennis match that prompts every passerby to stop and watch? Are we intrigued by the idea of finding competition in ourselves? Is it that this opponent we cannot see reminds us of the little virus that's turned our lives upside down? Or maybe we're enticed by the invitation to keep playing anyway, even when the courts are closed and partners unavailable. The man continues to hit the ball, swinging his arms like the hands of a clock tower, swiping at windmills, spinning like a dancer, conquering the invisible that lies ahead of him. We're drawn to such scenes that make us curious, that cause us to question the very truths we believe in and inspire us to take a closer look at ourselves. To shift from observer to the player is no small task. How does someone watching the game pick up the racket and play? Dostoevsky suggests that a key ingredient is courage, comfort, and vulnerability. Calvino calls for an open mind and creativity. I think what you need most is a deep understanding of yourself, an awareness of your own profound and measurable power. I adore you, class of 2020. Over the years, you have filled my classroom with laughter and joy and moments of beautiful contemplation. You are open and generous and brilliant, each and every one of you. Memories of your kindness and spontaneity and genuine love for learning will keep me smiling for years to come. I hope you never lose sight of how valuable and important each one of you truly is, especially as you bravely tackle the challenges that lie ahead and these uncertain times of transition. Your class must lead, lead the way. You have all my trust. 
So carry on with your joy, your spontaneity, your thoughtfulness. Play tennis with a ghost. Embrace this new world that we're living in, which might seem like a fantasy or a fable for now. Maybe Calvino was right. Maybe you'll find more truth and meaning in this world that feels like fiction. Whatever the case, I have faith that you will be the class that will surge forward and lead us all into a bright and beautiful hymn. Thank you. Es un honor para mí presentar a quien no requiere presentación. Rodolfo Franco es un profesor de español, representante de la clase de 12 y sin duda alguna, figura fundamental de nuestra comunidad. Con más de 50 años enseñando en nuestro colegio, ha formado numerosas generaciones, entregando siempre el sello de nido. Apasionado de la literatura hispanoamericana, promotor del pensamiento crítico, la creatividad y el compromiso con una mejor sociedad. Doy la palabra al profesor Rodolfo Franco. Queridos y afortunados alumnos de nido, este no es un discurso, porque creo que los discursos ya están pasados de moda. Mi mamá decía cuando nos poníamos a hablar, bájense del pollo, niñito. Y hoy, en este momento tan especial que vivimos en el mundo, le voy a hacer caso. Saludos, mamá. Estás en un lugar muy especial. Saludos a todas las mamás que nos están viendo. Ellas les dieron la leche y la miel y merecen ser destacadas en el día de hoy. Saludos a los papás. Algunos les dieron el apellido y el dinero para pagar el colegio. Saludos a las hermanas y hermanos, a las amigas y a los amigos. Saludos a las profesoras y a los profesores que los han acompañado en este maravilloso viaje de niñez a juventud. Sí, pues ustedes han recorrido un viaje muy especial, niños. Durante 15 años, desde cuando sus profesoras de kinder los vieron llorar siendo aún unos bebés. Y luego, cuando comenzaron a jugar, a aprender, a leer y a escribir, a sumar, multiplicar, restar y compartir. Anduvieron por los caminos de Middle School en busca de adolescentes y procasas aventuras computacionales y luego en high school viajaron con Odiseo, cuestionaron la existencia con Edipo y ahí comenzaron a preguntar ¿y para qué sirve todo esto? e intentaron encontrar una respuesta, sufrieron con el final del juego, se rebelaron contra todos los Pedro Páramo, algunos tuvieron un sueño de espejismo se desencantaron con las ambiguas promesas de la economía. Se encantaron con un falso futuro esplendor. Y de repente, casi al final del viaje, todo cambió. Y se desencadenó el esperado estallido social. Y las mujeres exigieron sus derechos. Y desde el oriente se escapó un caprichoso virus. Y algunos me dijeron, Franco, qué mala suerte hemos tenido. Ya no podemos encontrarnos con un abrazo. Ya no podemos despedirnos con un beso. Ya no puedo visitar a mi abuela ni a mi abuelo. Ya no tuvimos fiesta de despedida. Ya no tendremos graduación. Todo está cambiando. ¿Qué sucederá con nosotros? Ya no sé a dónde ir. Nos vamos a un mundo nuevo, distinto, donde hasta la palabra Dios será diferente. Y en este momento tan especial de despedida, yo no tengo una respuesta a tantas preguntas formuladas. ¿Cómo arrastrar la pesada piedra de Sísifo? ¿Cómo resolver el problema de la familia que busca un autor? ¿Cómo evitar la corrupción? ¿Cómo recobrar la dignidad con la llegada de Godot? ¿Con el reconocimiento de los trabajadores de Machu Picchu? ¿Con el descubrimiento de nuestra verdadera identidad? 
con la justicia para América Latina, condenada a 100 años de soledad, con el triunfo de la loca cordura de Don Quijote, con el encuentro del verdadero amor? ¿Dónde estaba el fundamento, el propósito de lo que tanto hablábamos en clase? Se terminaron las sumas, las restas, las multiplicaciones y las divisiones. La solución no es solo de ustedes, es de todos. Con ustedes se va un tipo de juventud muy especial, la generación del 2020 que no lo ha pasado muy bien. Sin embargo, jóvenes, todo no es un sueño imposible. Las estrellas seguirán brillando. El sol no se enfriará. Los ríos volverán a ser cristalinos. El mar nos bañará tranquilo y azul. Las abejas continuarán fabricando su miel. El planeta será para todos. Estimados alumnos, fue un desafío y un honor haberlos acompañado en este viaje que hoy termina. ¿Saben? Tenía razón mi mamá. Los discursos pasaron de moda. Adiós. Les prometo que los echaré de menos. Rodolfo Franco. Thank you, Franco. I now have the honor of introducing one of our seniors who was chosen by his classmates to deliver the commencement speech in English. Benjamin Crosby arrived to Santiago from the United States when he was just five years old. He has grown up with us for the last 13 years, whereby the Nido Hills and hallways have served as his home. Ben is known by his peers for being passionate about speech and debate, for being a kind and accepting member of the community, and for be being full of love and humor. And now I would like to invite Benjamin Crosby to deliver his remarks to the class of 2020. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for choosing me to speak for our class. I feel so honored and grateful to have this opportunity. And thank you to all the amazing parents and teachers and other family members uh, who have played such formative roles in making us the people who we are today, these people who will go off and face the world. So according to a former editor of the Washington Post magazine, somewhere right now, at this very moment, there's an asteroid. And that asteroid's destiny is to one day hit the planet Earth. And this could, this could be within our lifetimes or it could be in a hundred million years, but its fate is sealed. And when I first learned this, I wasn't struck so much by the fact itself as I was by the feeling that it instilled in me, which was almost inexplicably a sense of comfort, uh, of poetry and even beauty. And I didn't know why such a, a seemingly dire forecast had made me feel that way, but it did. And then something totally unforeseen, something that has always been on track to happen at precisely this moment, something that completely changed the way we lived our senior year and our lives in general happened. And when I got past the stage of being sad for the things that we lost, I finally understood or at least gained a greater insight into why I wasn't alarmed or afraid of this asteroid. Because what follows an event like that, an event that takes away everything that was once taken for granted, is a period of revival, of renaissance, of a new and greater appreciation and direction. Personally, I can think of several ways this semester has fundamentally and positively changed my outlook on life and the way I approach everyday life. And I hope that most people would feel that as well. And this leads into another point, which is that if the true value of a high school education is measured in how well it prepares us for life after graduation, then maybe this was the most valuable senior year experience 
that any NEATO class has had in recent memory, since we've all been so uniquely prepared to deal with all the future disruptions and setbacks that will inevitably happen over the course of our lives. So during my academic career, I've often struggled very mightily with procrastination. I actually just finished writing the speech while Franco was talking. <laughs> Um, there's, a, there's a quote from, uh, from one of the founding fathers of the United States that goes, never do today what you can do tomorrow. Something may occur to make you regret any premature action. And that, that was actually Aaron Burr. And I've often sort of half jokingly reminded myself of that quote to justify procrastinating in my mind. But I've only recently come to appreciate just how terrible that advice is. Because yes, something might occur to make you regret premature action. But as we've all now learned, something will more likely occur that will make you desperately regret your inaction. I think that if we can truly devote ourselves to living our lives presently and deliberately, then we won't be left helpless and deprived when a cataclysm strikes. Because the power of the asteroid lies in its ability to cut something short, to bring about an abrupt ending. But whether or not we live our lives such that an abrupt ending leads to regrets and I should have done that sooner. And these acute cases of 2020 hindsight is in our hands. That's why the asteroid is not something to be feared or reviled at all. Because whether or not it's the earth shattering threat that it purports to be is in our hands. We can look at it and ask questions like, why us? Why now? And I know my fellow Lang and Lit people will recognize the answer, why you? Why anybody? But if we can look into the eyes of an incoming disaster and tell it that we are strong enough to face it, that we are strong enough to support each other and our community, and that we are, we are strong enough to move forward with 2020 foresight because we have no reason to regretfully, uh, to, sorry, wistfully regret the past, then we have the power and the ability to avoid devastation. So, class of 2020, class of the pandemic, mis queridos compañeros, on that note, I ask you to not forget what I believe to be the most valuable lesson that this year has taught us, which is not to put anything off, to do what is important, what is necessary, what is fulfilling and enriching to you and the people you love at the first opportunity you get, because that philosophy might be the only thing that can prepare you for the next asteroid. Thank you. Les confieso que había muchos alumnos que querían, añoraban, deseaban decir las palabras farewell, adiós, hasta pronto, pero solo se podía elegir a uno. Es de nacionalidad chilena, llegó a nido siendo todavía un bebé y hoy, después de 15 años, nos tiene que decir adiós. Con mucha afección, dejo con ustedes a Matías Moreno Pola. Gracias, Franco. Bueno, antes de comenzar este speech, antes de ir a las risas y la nostalgia, me gustaría pedirle un favor a todos. Eh, a pesar de que este es nuestro momento, no podemos darle la espalda o ignorar lo que está pasando. Todos hemos visto las noticias durante los últimos meses y especialmente durante los últimos días. Hemos sido capaces de, con más atención y detalle, ver las injusticias que preponderan no solo en Chile, sino en el mundo. No les vengo a pedir soluciones, tampoco consuelo. Solamente les vengo a pedir que después de esta grabación, demos las gracias, no lo hacemos muy seguido. A sus padres, a su Dios, si es que tienen, al hecho de que tenemos techo, y al hecho de que tuvimos y vamos a seguir teniendo una educación ejemplar. En otras palabras, en estos tiempos de hecatombe, les vengo a pedir conciencia de nosotros mismos y lo que nos rodea. Y que por eso, demos la gracia. Bueno, ahora el speech. Este es el fin. Ah, no lo puedo creer. Este es el fin de una era, de una etapa muy larga. La más larga. Probablemente la que más nos ha formado. Quiero comenzar dando las gracias a nuestras familias, a los profesores, a la directiva a todos los que creyeron en esta generación y nos encaminaron hacia este futuro por venir. Aquí, bueno, en el colegio, aprendimos a ser personas, estudiantes, deportistas, intelectuales, algunos incluso aprendieron a amar el carrete, mientras que otros aprendieron a amar los libros. 
y algunos pocos encontraron el balance perfecto entre los dos. Pero todos acá aprendimos a ser compañeros y eventualmente nos convertimos en amigos. Aprendimos a levantarnos a las seis y media de la mañana para entrar a clases a las 7.45. Pero no solamente nos levantamos juntos, sino también caímos. Como dijo el filántropo, filósofo y artista urbano, Drake, started from the bottom, now we're here. Y bueno, desde abajo, desde el principio, hemos escalado para llegar a este momento. Porque hay que ser honestos, como generación, hemos caído bastante. Derrotas injustas en Spirit Week. El sufrimiento de no poder vernos estos últimos meses. Incluso el hecho de que esta grabación sea virtual. Pero aún así, sobrevivimos. Al primer noviazgo, que se dolió mucho. A las noches somnolientas por el estudio. Algunos locos y locas al segundo noviazgo. Algunos sobrevivieron a las clases de la Miss Cooper, mientras que otros sobrevivieron a las clases de Supli Cornell. Y todos acá sobrevivimos a lo que casi fue, pero no alcanzó a ser. También hemos experimentado juntos separaciones brutales, no solo en el colegio, sino que en la vida, como la de One Direction. Nosotros con nuestro prom. Cristiano y el Real Madrid, lo vivimos juntos. Los estudiantes de Ivy Art y su exposición. Iron Man y los Avengers. Los de básquet y volei con su sac. Y también evolucionamos juntos, desde Gangnam Style y Payphone a Tatusa y T.O.T. Pero ya, siendo más honestos, a pesar de todo, todas las penumbras, veo a cada uno de ustedes aquí, con una sonrisa. Ahora, en este preciso momento, estamos todos separados, cada uno frente a un computador. Pero de alguna forma extraña, estamos todos juntos. Estamos juntos para celebrar, para coronar a la mejor generación que ha tenido Nido en su historia. La que más ha logrado y la que más va a lograr. La generación más resiliente, trabajadora, inspiradora y bueno, apuesta en la historia del Colegio Internacional Nido de Aires. Cada uno de ustedes, de nosotros, puede decir que es parte de la generación 2020. Lleve 15 años en el colegio o uno. De aquí es parte el que es, el que está. Incluso el que estuvo, pero especialmente el que estuvo y se quería quedar. Porque es lamentable, pero es un colegio internacional. No se puede evitar que alumnos se vayan, pero hay que acordarnos que siempre llegan nuevos. Esta característica del nido es la que ha creado y marcado a esta generación. Una de brazos abiertos, de mente abierta y gente sensacional. Lo que se viene para cada uno de nosotros es espectacular. Aquí, señores y señoras, están viendo a graduados destinados para la grandeza. Cada uno de ustedes tiene el potencial para cambiar el mundo. Todos acá presentes son individuos que destacan. Destacaron en high school y van a destacar en la vida. Delante de ustedes están viendo un porvenir brillante, conmovedor, un, un futuro con esperanza, el cual se ha dirigido por cada uno de estos jóvenes, por sus hijos y nietos, por la generación 2020. Sí, el futuro nos está llamando, un día a la vez, y nosotros nos encargaremos de dejar el mundo de una forma mejor a la que lo encontramos. Que bueno, al final del día es lo mismo que hicimos con este colegio. Al buscar videos y artículos en cómo dar un graduation speech, pensaba solamente en una cosa. Nos vamos. Dejamos el nido. No pun intended. Jordan tuvo que dejar a los Bulls, ¿cierto? Nos vamos del nido para volar. Y vamos a volar más alto que Ícaro. Pero al igual que él, vamos a caer. Solamente para volver a levantarnos. Es lo que llevamos haciendo juntos ya 15 años. Y lo vamos a seguir haciendo. Porque seamos honestos, lo que se viene no es fácil. No es fácil. Pero estamos listos para, para como Sísifo, llevar esa roca hasta la cima de la montaña todos los días, a pesar de que va a volver a caer. Estamos listos para nuevos desafíos y metas, sin importar lo duro que puedan ser. Estamos listos para levantarnos y aprender de cualquier golpe que nos brinde el futuro. Estamos listos para estar asustados. Porque si no estás asustado, no estás tomando riesgos. Y si no estás tomando riesgos, ¿qué estás haciendo? Bueno, hoy día 
nosotros estamos tomando el riesgo, un riesgo inevitable, un riesgo que da mucho susto. Estamos corriendo el riesgo de crecer, de avanzar. Eso significa que nos vamos, sí. Pero eso solo significa que cada uno se va a un lugar distinto, que vamos a influenciar cada esquina del mundo. Asia, Europa, Norteamérica, Sudamérica, Oceanía, estoy seguro de que algunos África. Y no me sorprendería si algún loco se va a Antártida. No sé cómo, pero no me sorprendería. Siempre vamos a estar conectados, de alguna forma u otra. Y a pesar de que no todos van a estar en la misma zona horaria, nos vamos a seguir levantando juntos. Bueno, para terminar, me gustaría decir que sé que eventualmente nos volveremos a ir, y estaremos todos juntos. Porque como dijo el filósofo Benito Antonio Martínez, la vida es un ciclo, y lo que no sirve, yo no lo reciclo, y nosotros servimos. Thank you, Mati. It is my pleasure now to request the assistant of Ms. Helen Larkin, president of the NIDO Parent Association, to confer the MPA Outstanding Senior Awards. The NIDO Parent Association recognizes two seniors who have best contributed to the development of the international spirit of NIDO. Ms. Larkin will now present the award. Each year, the NIDO Parent Association sponsors the Outstanding Senior Student Award with the goal of recognizing one senior female student and one senior male student who have best contributed to the development of NIDO's mission and values. The criteria for this award that are considered include active participation in school activities, visibility and concrete evidence of leadership, well-rounded character, supportive behavior, strong communication skills, and a high academic standing. The first student to receive this award is universally admired, not only for her exceptional academic and athletic accomplishments, but also for her extraordinary level of compassion and care. As a budding experimental scientist, four-time student ambassador, leader, and coordinator, and three-time varsity volleyball captain, this student learns and leads with an authentic curiosity. Teachers, mentors, advisors, and coaches agree that her ability to quickly and creatively learn from her setbacks is one of her many superpowers. This student has pursued all three diplomas offered at NIDO. She shares the second highest GPA and is one of seven seniors enrolled in IB higher level maths and two IB higher sciences. She is also one of four seniors who completed an IB extended essay in the field of physics. Her adaptability, growth mindset, and high degree of intrinsic motivation will undoubtedly ensure her success as she enters the engineering program at Duke University next year. This year's Outstanding Senior Student Award is presented to Yi Sin So. And now for the second award, presented to an Outstanding Senior Male Student. During his 15 years at NIDO, this student has been an incredible role model to all members of our NIDO community. He has been both a visionary and workhorse in the Student Ambassador Program. His empathy, maturity, and optimism, combined with his training and an understanding cultures, supporting new students, and authentic leadership, make him one of the best student ambassadors NIDO has ever seen. Teachers who work with a student praise his humility and his open-mindedness. Students who collaborate with this student appreciate his patience and willingness to try new things. This student pursued all three diplomas offered at NIDO, higher level IB math and physics, and he is one of only two seniors who completed an IB extended essay in the music topic area. Next year, the student will share his deep love for learning and his pride for his homeland of Chile with the University of Chicago where he will explore his interests in economics, politics, and history. This year's Outstanding Senior Award is presented to Pascual Golden.
I now have the honor of presenting the award for academic excellence on behalf of the Nido Parent Association. The award for academic excellence recognizes a senior who values the importance of education, has demonstrated outstanding academic performance, and made an exceptional contribution to the school community. Because of this student's intellect, enthusiasm, and collaboration, one teacher identified her as the most gifted student that he has taught in 25 years. Another teacher references this student's work to see if there are any answers in the exam answer keys. All teachers agree that she regularly takes precious time to satisfy her huge thirst for knowledge well beyond the curriculum. In the classroom and community, this student leads by example, without need for recognition and fanfare. She flawlessly coordinated new student orientations, international soccer league championships, and peer study groups because she excels in managing both granular details as well as, a, as strategic vision. This student pursued all three diplomas at NIDO, shares the highest GPA in the class, and she has received departmental awards for her accomplishments in both English and social studies. After taking a gap year, the student will live her values of being present, being kind, and being open to awe at Williams College. This year, the MPA Award for Academic Excellence is presented to Emma Neuhauser. <laughs> and now, I have the honor of addressing the class of 2020, and this, of course, is my favorite part of the ceremony. I thought about the best way to begin this speech, and I realized, like any good English major would, that the only way to address the complexity of this special moment is through poetry. And so tonight, we will begin with a poem. Keeping quiet by Pablo Neruda. Now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still for once on the face of the earth. Let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for a second and not move our arms so much. It would be an exotic moment without rush, without engines. We would all be together in sudden strangeness. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales, and the man gathering salt would not look at his hurt hands. Those who prepare green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire, victories with no survivors would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers in the shade, doing nothing. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. Life is what it is about. If we were not so single-minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing, Perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Now I'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. Seniors. What has it been like for you not to keep your life moving? What has it felt like to do nothing for once? To keep quiet? To be without rush, without engines? It is interesting that Neruda wrote this poem for us in the 1950s, about 70 years ago. It probably then seemed like a romantic invitation, an idealistic covenant. Now, it has become a local mandate, a global proclamation. At first, this quarantine felt for me like an absolute loss. What about my job? 
What about our friends? What about our families? What about our trip? What about our lives? What about you? And I know many of you felt the same, and you also mourned your cherished senior events. What about the prom? What about the athletic tournaments, the musical, the senior sunset, and now the graduation ceremony itself? The world has at times felt cruel. We have wanted, no, begged to resume activity, but we were told, no, it is time for quiet, time to keep still, time to be together in sudden strangeness. So what did we learn? What did we learn about our brothers and our sisters and mothers and fathers and friends? What did we learn about the world? What do we now understand about ourselves? What came to be in this exotic moment without rush? Neruda advises us not to confuse this experience, not to see it as total inactivity. No, he says, life is what it is about. Life, not loss, life. So what happens to us if we reframe this experience? If we see this as a gift, not a punishment, if when we look back, we don't say that we were waiting, that we were stuck. What if we determine instead that we were living? What if we've never been more alive and present than we have been in the last three months? And if this is what life is really about, slowing down, being together with those whom you love, not harming your fellow man, caring for the earth, and coming to fully accept and understand yourself, then how do we thoughtfully emerge? Class of 2020, there's no class in recent history and certainly not in my lifetime that has been invited into the future in this special way. So when the pace picks up and the quiet becomes noise and the stillness turns to motion, what aspects of this experience will you carry into your future? What will you hold? What will you protect? Will you continue to play games and share meals with your family? Will you call a friend whom you hadn't spoken to in a long time? Will you make something with your hands because it fulfills you to be creative? Will you read a book because you love to ignite your imagination? Will you stare out the window and relish the view of the mountains? Will you notice the leaves when the season turns from summer to fall? Will you give gratitude for the things that you have and let go of the things that you realized you don't really need? Will you cherish your community and always find, to make, find ways to make connections near and far? Will you be thankful for acts of kindness and care for those who are suffering? Will you use your voice and your means to stand up for injustice? Will you spend time with yourself in order to understand more about your life, your purpose? If you remember, we started this school year on your last first day with a theme. And that theme was purpose. In fact, we sat silent as a collective community in this same theater and meditated upon that idea. Do you remember? Perhaps we didn't know then what finding real purpose should feel like. Perhaps we were not silent long enough. As they say, hindsight is 2020. So class of 2020, how will you emerge? How will you intentionally launch into a world that is still? You have the tools, you are reflective, you are creative, you are patient, you have certainly been awakened, and you are resilient. 
The world needs you. In fact, I would argue that there has never been a class more prepared to enter the world than you. You just need to ask yourself, how will I emerge from this exotic moment, this huge silence, with purpose? Today marks the occasion. You've counted to 12. So now I'll keep quiet and you will go. Y ya estamos llegando a la parte más importante y emotiva de esta ceremonia, la entrega de los diplomas. Me acompañan en este segmento la directora del Plan Nacional, señora Paz Nálega, y la profesora de Artes Escénicas y Advisory de la clase, María José Núñez Arancidia. César Aguilar Polanco. One thing I like about NIDO is its diversity in cultures and nationalities. Si Wu An. I want to shout out my friends, family, Kenya, and my teachers for helping me out these past four years. Cristian Alamos. Nicolás Añasco. I would like to thank my generation for being strong and supportive during these difficult times. Christian Anderson. Hey guys, I'd like to thank everyone for staying real and thanks to Nito for opening up so many doors for my future. Antonia Arevalo Giorgudis. Fernanda Arrieta Danae Abayu I just wanted to say that I am beyond proud of our generation. It has been challenging, but we're making history. Also thank all the teachers that taught us life lessons. Jocelyn Bachman I've enjoyed my time at NIDO and I'm glad that I was part of this grade. Um, and I hope that one day we can celebrate better. Jordan Baker. Maria Jose Balin Fürst. La Jen los voy a extrañar mucho. Eh, siempre los voy a tener en mi corazón. Y sé sí o sí que en algún futuro nos vamos a reunir todos juntos para poder despedirnos. Tomás Sungio Bang Kim. Bianca Juliana Becerra Mercado. Lourdes Federica Besón Quina. Kitan Badgal. My most cherished memory would be how friendly people are when I came to Nido and how I have made so many different friends from different backgrounds in the years at Nido. Carolina Bilep Garay. Life is an improvisation. You have no idea what's going to happen next and you're most likely just making things up as you go along. I wish you all well in this new chapter of life and congratulations. Belén Bugueño Nalegat. I want to thank the NIDO community and my teachers for these amazing four years and wish the best of luck to all my dearest classmates. Those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. Sebastián Andrés Busto Silva. Bueno, a mi familia le quería decir eh, gracias por el cariño y las oportunidades que me han dado y a la generación 2020 eh, todo lo mejor para el futuro son lo mejor. Melanie Cafati McNiven. I love Nido's vibrant culture in which each individual is respected, 
and uniquely accompanied in a journey without walls to fully develop our passions. Stefano Canata Kiven. I want to thank everyone, uh, students, teachers, and staff for these amazing four years, and I wish you the best for the years to come. Adria Carmona Colet. Hey guys, I wish you all the best in your life, and I hope we all have the bright future Nido prepared us for. Good luck to everyone. Camila Sele. Emanuel Chiti. Patrick Clary. By far my favorite part of Nido was its multicultural aspect and the wonderful people I got to meet along the way. Hanson Cole. Raquel Colón Carrasquillo. I want to thank Nito not only for teaching me so many valuable lessons, but also allowing me to meet so many great people and form lifelong friends. To the class of 2020, thank you for all the memories. Los quiero mucho. Miguel Corredor Romero. I want to thank my friends, my family, and my teachers, and I am very excited for my future endeavors. Eliana Lela Cortez. Los amo a todos y les deseo absolutamente lo mejor por venir. And teachers, thank you, and I will miss you guys so much. Silvia Cotuño. Quality over quantity. This is what high school students and teachers have taught me. What I love about this school is the strong and beautiful friendships I've made. Cooper Cox. Came in a pudgy freshman, left a proud senior. Thank you, Nito. Mia Crawford. Benjamin Crosby. Whatever person I am today and whatever person I'll be for the rest of my life has been formed here at NITO for the last 13 years. So thank you to everyone who has been a part of my life here. Sofia Cuetos. Thank you, class of 2020, for all the amazing experiences, memories, and lessons. And thank you, parents and teachers, for all the support you have given us over these last four years. Baltasar Cummins. Llegó la hora de decirle chao al colegio y a la generación 2020, que es definitivamente la mejor generación en la que se puede estar. Gracias a todos por ser la mejor generación. Frederico Dalanora Buril de Macedo. I just want you all to remember to never look back, it distracts from the now. Franco Del Bono Lonardi. Samantha Doherty. To the class of 2020, good luck with whatever you pursue and thank you for all the memories I've created at NITO with you all. John Faul. What I love about Nido is all the different uh, people and teachers that you got to meet through the years. Angelo Ferrando. My most memorable memory of Nido will be bringing my family and closest friends from outside of school to experience Nido Kermes with me. Michal Frenkel Farkas. Generación 2020, estoy tremendamente agradecida de todos ustedes y me siento muy afortunada de haber compartido estos 12 años a su lado. Ignacia Friend Simón. As my high school year comes to an end, the biggest obstacle I learned and I'm still learning today is that things don't always go according to plan. Sometimes situations arise which forces us to bend a little, but things all work out eventually. Fernando Fuentes Pinto. The Nido community is the community that I felt the most. Welcomed in and done um, well. The place where I felt at home. It's where I could be myself and I love it. Martin Gajardo. What I love the most about our generation is that our generation went through all. Cristina Garcia Garcia. 
This year we have faced many challenges, but we have successfully overcome them. Congratulations to everyone for completing the year and thank you for the amazing memories you have given me. Tomás García Poitevin. Gracias querido Nido de Águilas por ser una comunidad tan abierta y preocupada en donde me sentí integrado desde el primer día. Daniela Gil. Pascual Goldin Flores. I want to thank the class of 2020 for being such an awesome generation. I want to thank Nido for being my second home. And I wish you all luck and hope we will all meet again. Franco Edgar Luis Gomez. I'd really like to thank all my friends and teachers that have supported me here at Nido. The memories we all had together, like the ones we made during our week without walls trips, will be ones I will never forget. Isabela Carolina Gonzalez Hinrichsen. Isabel Gosland. My favorite thing about Nido are the teachers and how they supported my specific journey and gave me so much to look forward to after Nido. Christian Gustin. Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well today. My favorite thing over the eight years that I've been here has been the friends and relationships that I've made with people around the world. I have become a better person because of them. Jose Tomas Guzman. Well, I'd say one of my favorite memories at Neo is going on a biking trip for a week where I was in 11th grade with many of my friends and having a great time. Megan Habib. My favorite memory at Neo was my week without walls trip in 11th grade. Andrea Elena Huerta Garcia. In the 10 years I've been at Nido, I've had a great time, and even though our generation can't be with each other now, I hope that we can continue being close in the future. Yuya Jim. What I love the most about Nido is its yearly festival, Kermes. I love how the school encourages students to embrace and appreciate different culture and the school's international environment. Philip Yuanyong. Barker. One of my favorite memories at Nido is creating a club in Estelo Nechea with some of my best friends and making a positive impact in the community. Samantha King. My favorite memory was at SAC last year um, for track and field. Victoria Goifman Luxinger. Agustín Kufer Hochschild. Obviamente todos disfrutamos la cuarentena, pero todos estamos esperando lo que viene después y estoy seguro que será mucho mejor y todos lo vamos a disfrutar. Keisuke Kurokawa. Well, by coming to Nido, I found a lot of new stuff about myself and it really did give me an indicator on what should I do at college. Josefina La Roca. What I love most about Nido is the classes that it offers and the dedication that the teachers have on their students. Antonia Lavarca Busquets. I'm very, very grateful for the education I have received at Nido and for my classmates and my teachers. Thank you so, so much. Jose Ignacio Laguna. A memory that I will never forget from Nido is all the friends that I made from different countries that I will keep forever. Maria Ignacia Larraín de la Cruz. Yesul Lee. I wish us a bright new chapter of our lives and hope that we can meet each other again somewhere around the globe. Ye Won Lee. I appreciate the friendly environment and friendly people I have surrounded myself with in Neo de Aguilas, and I am very grateful for the amazing experiences the school has allowed me to have. Ji Min Lee. Chao. 
Chang Yu Liu. I feel very fortunate to belong to such a hard working class. It really does make a huge difference when everyone around you has an attitude to become not only a better student but a better person. Dede Liu. Jose Tomás López Caballero. My favorite memory at Nido was meeting my most recent group of friends, Joko, Lara, everybody else. I'm sorry I can't mention you all. Thank you for everything. María Fernanda López Caballero. As we have seen through the last year, our time is limited. So all I want to say is don't waste it living someone else's life. And most importantly, have the courage to follow your heart. Hannah Lyons. I'm excited to open a new chapter in my life after high school. I couldn't have done it without my friends and I hope everyone has a good graduation. Héctor Marchan Adasme. Definitivamente estos cuatro años en Nio fueron los mejores cuatro años de mi vida. Gracias a mis compañeros por hacer estos lugares agradables y impresionado por la educación que me dieron. Aidan McLaughlin. Andrew Scott McGathlin Maggi. I have reached the conclusion that the quality of my life and that of my school has molded me as a person and a student who have all cultivated the very unique perspective of the world that I have. Marcello Mena. I would like to thank all my classmates because thanks to them I really enjoyed my last uh, high school years. Robert Mines. I'd like to uh, thank my friends my amazing family and the dedicated staff at Nido. Hideko Mitani Shen. Thank you to the class of 2020 for unforgettable memories and fun times together. I will forever treasure Nido's kind students, teachers, and staff. We G Moon. I think our class did a great job adapting to new circumstances and being able to push boundaries in order to achieve further success. Roberto Morel Cumi. Class of 2020 is a very awesome class, very united. What I love about Nido is a very friendly environment. My favorite memory is playing soccer with my friends at lunch. Benjamin Morelos. To my class of 2020, I wish you a lot of happiness in whatever you're doing next. Matias Moreno Polak. Ricardo Moro. I have many good memories at Nidos, but certainly the funniest one was when my uh, thermos of chickpeas exploded in uh, Mr. Suplice's face. Jose Navarro. I want to thank Nido for creating a both inclusive and encouraging community. It's just something you don't often find, and I'm glad I came here. Emma Neuhauser Diaz. Everyone at Nido is just so welcoming and kind, and it really is that place where you feel like you belong. And I just couldn't be more grateful to everyone in this community and to get to be a part of this community. Amaya Novas Peña. Bishrut Ori. I would like to thank Nido's teachers and faculty members for inculcating the best of values, providing an excellent foundation for the rest of my life. Pablo Francisco Pardo Vargas. I want to thank everyone, students and teachers alike, for making me seven years really awesome. I uh, wish everybody the best of luck. Kevin San Yun Park. Why not 2020? I know you guys are gonna do great. After high school, let this all the mejor. Thank you for 15 years. Sofia Pellegrini. I am thankful to my grade for helping me grow throughout these four years, and I hope that we get the chance to celebrate soon all together. Nelia Perry. There's so much to love about Nido, but I'd say my all-time favorite thing is the relationships I get to build with the staff, from teachers to coaches to janitors and anyone else there to help us. Sofia Picciotto. Um, what I love about Nido are all of the events and instances, 
the community feeling, the way diversity is celebrated, and lastly, all of the friendships that I've made. Josefa Valentina Pichara Ochoa. Constantin Ponce Handal. My favorite childhood memory at Nido de Aguilas is Kermes while I was in elementary school. Nicolás Pugliese. Gracias a todos por estos tres años. Aprendí más que nunca de una manera u otra. Antonia Ramírez García. It wasn't the year we expected, but somehow we made it and I'm proud of all of us. And the Generation 2020 will always be remembered because of it. Antonia Ramírez Raab. Pedro Ramírez Cerce. What I love from Nido is the diversity of people and personalities one can meet. Nicolás Riquelme. Camilo Rivera Fust. School has been the formation of not only a student but a person, understanding the world through oneself and embracing endless perspective. Alejandra Rodríguez Molina What I most love about Nido is how it helped me try out all my areas of interest and develop my passions. Without this, I wouldn't have discovered what I want to do in the future. Daniela Rojas Mackenzie Diego San Marí Siempre me voy a acordar del día que me cambié al Nido. Eh, un gran cambio para mí en mi vida y doy las gracias por haber tomado esta decisión, por los recuerdos y las amistades que me llevo. Shina Saito. Nido taught me a lot and I had several wonderful experiences. Thank you so much for teachers, friends and all the people who I met for being nice and supporting me for the past four years. Fernanda Salas Ormazábal. My favorite memory at Nido is going to Disney with the dance team. It was the trip of a lifetime. I'll never forget it. Felipe Sandoval. Thank you everyone for such an amazing year. You're all such great people and I really cannot thank you all enough. Maria Paz Savoldi. Nicolás Schmidt. My favorite memories at Nido are all the lunches I was able to spend with my friends at the Blue Courts or at the Fields Down in Elementary and all the crazy soccer games we've had there. Stephanie Shore Prado. In my time in Nido, I have learned to love. Love my journey and everyone that has been a part of it. I wish everybody the best and have no doubts that we will all reach our dreams. Juan Pablo Celame Fernández. Como dijo John Zeta, loco, humilde y real. Gabriel Sinai Kotner. Algo que me encanta de Nio y su comunidad es lo variado que son los intereses y variado que son los talentos. Y al mismo tiempo nos fomentamos a que esos intereses y talentos vayan floreciendo. Mariana Sostín Ramírez. Class of 2020, thank you so much for the years of laughter and memories I will never forget. I cannot wait to see all the great things you accomplish. I'll miss you all. Marcos Turiza. Carolina Suay. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Class of 2020, I hope you chase your dreams unapologetically as you begin this new chapter in your life. Ella Sandstrom. Isumi Tanaka. Thank you, Nido, for all the experiences and memories. I have been able to understand myself and those around me deeper and truly enjoy every little moment. Isidora Vega Arduiz.
Carmela Villavicencio. Hola a todos, quería agradecerles por todos estos años y darles un consejo que es que siempre aprovechen la vida al máximo haciendo lo que a ustedes les hace feliz. Y shout out to the teachers, thank you for everything. Agustín Volante Silva. Thank you Gen 2020 for the past four years and I wish you all the best. George Westcott. Hi, I'm George Westcott, and I would just like to tell class of 2020 to stay strong. Uh, you guys are amazing, and thank you for everything. Frederick Emil Wilkins. I would just uh, quickly like to thank everyone for making the last three years of my high school the career the most memorable, and I love to see how everyone came together during the times of COVID-19 and really stood behind each other to help one another out. G -C Coming to Nido has changed my life and I will always be proud to say I was a Nido student, especially because I'm part of the class of 2020. Wow, that was so incredible and moving. Thank you to Justin Gibbs and the music teachers and all the faculty that helped put that together. It was really beautiful. Well, <clears throat> good evening, and thank you everyone for being with us. Before I begin my remarks, I would like to offer a resounding thank you to Dr. McKenna, 
for her incredible work throughout the year, and especially this past semester. And I hope that you're all clapping at home right now. Kate, you're a tireless, dedicated, caring, smart, and compassionate principal. And we are so lucky and grateful that you're here with us at NEDO. Thank you for everything that you've done to make this year special for our seniors. And thank you to you and your team for arranging this most memorable graduation. We owe a deep gratitude also to the high school teachers and counselors who have delivered a world-class program under the most trying of circumstances. You have been truly heroic. You have sustained this community and allowed for the learning to continue so that we are able to reach this moment of graduation together. As a parent and as the headmaster, I cannot thank you enough for what you have accomplished. Also to our staff and operations workers who have continued to keep our physical school up and running even when most of us can't be there. Thank you for your care, expertise and courage. And a special thank you to the class of 2020 for the remarkable grace and spirit that you brought to this most unusual year. I have been privileged to watch some of you grow up since you were in seventh grade. I've been at some of your homes. I'm friends with some of your parents. Some of you are the children of my colleagues. And I've been privileged to cheer for you in the courts, the playing fields, and in the swimming pool, applaud for you in the theater, exchange ideas with you at art exhibitions, listen to you debate, and engage in a few debates with you personally, and ultimately watch you lead and set a tone for the whole high school. Regarding the latter, I wanna emphasize two things. Your united spirit, something by the way that I saw in your parents too, and your leadership. Through these qualities, you made our time on campus this year, even in its abbreviated form, the best it has ever felt to me. I mean that seriously, truly the best. Next, as Mr. Cornell put it to me recently, your class had the opportunity this year to have what he called an, an inconvenient but incredible education. In the first semester, your lives were disrupted by protest and unrest, and you had the opportunity to see political action firsthand. You experienced and processed with your teachers a worldwide movement that is called into question the current order of things, a movement that continues and will likely be a focus of research and debate at universities and beyond for years to come. You will bring to those discussions your own unique eyewitness experience and incredible education indeed. Then the coronavirus swept across the globe, reaching Chile in March and gradually bringing the entire nation to a halt. Again, your lives were disrupted in ways that went beyond inconvenience. Like the rest of us, you have experienced the fear and confusion of facing an invisible danger. But you have also missed all of the natural markers of the second semester of senior year. Senior sunset, prom, SAC, fine and performing art exhibitions, graduation, family celebrations, and much, much more. This has been difficult for all of us, but especially for all of you. But again, despite these unprecedented challenges, through your united spirit and leadership, you have set an equally unprecedented positive tone for the high school. And through your response to the crisis, taught us all something important. And that is this. In every crisis, every setback, every disappointment, there are opportunities. There are difficulties and sorrows for sure, but also opportunities for empathy, responsibility, creativity, and caring. We've seen your class seize these opportunities in so many ways. We have seen it in the way you have maintained your focus on your classes and your commitments, even when you knew that there would not be IB exams at the end to hold you accountable. Nobody, by the way, was more disappointed about the canceling of those exams than your teachers as they were expecting your class to set a new record for our school average. This doesn't surprise us because as one of your teachers put it, your class has always wanted to know things without needing to show off about ultimately knowing them. You seem to want to learn simply for the joy of having done so. We've seen you too be caring and empathetic in the ways you supported each other this year. We've seen you be responsible in the ways you have respected the quarantines and social distancing rules. We have seen you seize opportunities for creativity 
like in the wonderful performance arts and humor that you have shared with us online. And we are seeing your spirit today in your participation in this ceremony. In your response to the challenges we are facing, you have also inspired me, your teachers, and the entire community to rally together. We've seen this in the way our community has raised funds for families that are struggling, and in the way your teachers, despite all of their own individual challenges, have continued to deliver the best education available, available in Chile and the world. We've seen it in the way NEDO guards, janitors, maintenance workers, and managers have come to school every day to take care of our campus and our operations. And we've seen it in the music, theater, and wellness events put together for our community during this time. You've made us all proud. I hope that you will also take pride in yourselves for the way you have responded together to this extraordinary challenge. As many of you know, my personal academic love is history. And so your response to this pandemic has got me thinking about that subject. In the previous century, a whole generation endured the Great Depression and fought fascism in Europe and throughout the world. And it was the young, people your age, who were asked to carry the heaviest burden and make the greatest sacrifices. And it was indeed a heavy burden. Journalist Tom Brokaw called the generation the greatest generation. Getting through the hardship they experienced is what made them ultimately exceptional. While we don't know yet how heavy this current burden may become, the way through is the same as it was then. And that is by privileging the we over the me. Just as you have done throughout your high school careers, and just as you are now doing by respecting the quarantines and social distancing rules. By giving up an in-person graduation, you are protecting others from the virus. Your sacrifices have already made you exceptional. So inconvenienced, yes, but exceptional in your character as a class and as, in, as individuals. Generous and thoughtful, caring and creative, empowered and empathetic. I hope that throughout your lives, you will remember these choices of solidarity and sacrifice and always choose the we over the me. So it's clear that your class has risen to the occasion and learned a lot this year. But I believe that each of us has individually been challenged to grow too. I know I have. In this sheltering in place, in this state of uncertainty, I am struck, for example, by my inability to control anything. Like me, some of you are likely experiencing fear and grief. But I believe that we can also position ourselves for an opportunity and more an awakening. One thing that I've been reflecting on is the idea that everything is transitory, that nothing is really certain. Not many people are able to accept and embrace the beauty of uncertainty, transience, or even mystery to be able to truly live in the moment. But I hope that you will each embrace the opportunity offered to you by this year and let it change your perspective. Let it awaken you. None of us would have chosen it. And I know this may be hard to do, but step towards it and embrace what can come from surrendering to the core truth that nothing is certain. There is something vital here in all of this unknown. If you let it, it will teach you why you are truly alive, that you're not alive to be perfect, to achieve awards, accolades, and victories, though I know all of you will do these things too, but rather you are alive to receive each moment for what it is, a monumental gift. So for now, perhaps we are all invited to live in the present moment. I hope this can be inspiring to you. I hope it will continue to kindle and encourage the tenderness and decency and common sense and community sense that I have seen within each of you this year. I hope that seizing the mindset of living in the moment will sharpen your focus on what makes life truly worth living, that it will embolden you to reach out for what you truly love, I hope that it recommits you to generosity, to empathy, and to kindness, and to use your lives ultimately to heal the world. And I hope that it moves you to really embrace one of Nido's values, happiness. My vision is that each of you as a class and as individuals continue, no matter what challenges come your way, to choose to relentlessly pursue happiness. As I've already said, 
I've been thinking a lot in quarantine about uncertainty, but I've also been thinking about happiness. Can we really pursue happiness in a pandemic? Can we find happiness amid all of the uncertainty? Ultimately, yes, I think we can. And I know you can. Your track record already proves it. While we often think of happiness coming about as a result of attaining our goals or reaching a destination, I think pursuing happiness is also about the journey, about the ways we get there, the way we pass from one moment to the next, our perspectives, our attitudes, how we think, and importantly, how we treat others along the way. Perhaps these things, especially in light of the uncertainty about the future, matter more than anything else. So remember, there is happiness both in treating each moment as a great gift and in acting on behalf of the we over the me, the two themes of my talk with you tonight. Finally, know that your parents, your teachers, and I all believe in you, and we hope that, we will let you, that you will let your experience at NEDO continue to motivate you to pursue a life that is meaningful and happy, ideally leading you to make a difference in an unpredictable world. To the class of 2020, our sincere gratitude and our heartfelt congratulations. We will miss you, we will always love you, and we can't wait to see what you do next. And now we'll go to a short message from the NEDO Alumni Association. Congratulations, class of 2020, and welcome to the NEDO Alumni Association. We are now connected through our global community and our shared values and experiences, and we invite you to participate actively in our network. Okay, hey guys, are you ready? Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the class of 2020. Adiós clase del 2020.
esperanza Tentar al futuro con el corazón Vale más el presente que el futuro Dale suave que aquí no hay apuro Ya salimos adelante, ya no le den mente Y abrazo para toda mi gente Mejor perder y que nunca embajar Mejor tentarse a dejar de intentar Y así será Y así será Y así So oh. 